It's early Sunday morning here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium and much of the 63,000 fans that packed into this stadium Saturday night left disappointed. BYU lost 20-13 to Utah, their fourth straight defeat to their rivals from just 40 miles up north. And uh, this was a game that uh, BYU really had a tough time getting going. They they fell behind early, went down 13-0. to zero. Later on in the game, they were down 20-6, to six, tried to rally late, couldn't do it. I'm Jared Lloyd, sports editor for the Daily Herald. Joining me, Jason Franchuk, BYU football columnist. And Jason, what do you take from this game? Well, I take that they were not as crisp as we thought. That, that might be a problem, considering the bye week, the big Texas win, which came with a lot of running. And Bronco Mendenhall mentioned it Monday, Jared. We talked about this off camera as far as he didn't feel that the team had practiced well coming off that bye week, coming into a new week, Utah week. And they looked tight. And I think the one thing that was hard to quantify coming into this this game was how were they going to handle the pressure? Yes, they're at home, but the pressure really was squarely on them. Now, Utah really, I think, needed this win for bowl game possibilities. But BYU needed this from a larger picture. And losing now four in a row, as you mentioned, seniors going out. Even Taysom Hill, Jamal Williams, may never get a chance in this rivalry game concerning their career paths and their age. So just a, a another lost opportunity. By I just want to see the youth play and beat, beat BYU because they've been beating them since they played them. I just want to see them beat them again. You know, I wasn't that impressed with Utah's offense, but I got to give them credit, and I really think this was the difference in the game. It's all about finishing. Anytime you're playing a sport, if you get an opportunity to score, you've got to be able to finish. If you look at the numbers in the red zone, Utah was 4 of 4, two touchdowns, two field goals, 20 points. BYU, 3 of 5, two field goals and a touchdown. When you lose by one touchdown, those numbers are glaring to me. And I think that this is a BYU team. I mean, they had a first and goal at the three and ended up with a you know a 30-yard field goal attempt. you got to be able to stuff that in and get touchdowns. I don't think this BYU team is as far along as many people might have thought they were, either after Texas or even before yeah. the season. I think they've got a long ways to go to be able to execute at the level that Robert and I needs them to execute. He talks all about going hard and going fast. But there's an execution level that was not there tonight. Well, it's impossible to make excuses. Look, they are where they are. They are where they are in the season and in the series. But it's still been a really weird season, Jared. This is my 11th. I've never seen a two-hour rain delay. I've seen them back-to-back. I think that was the first time I'm thinking that I've seen a young man carted off the field with an injury. We lose Jamal Williams at a really critical point. I think emotionally and strategically that was really tough. I think Robert and I after that got a little haywire. I think the guys were flat coming out of a 15 minute delay. They end up settling for a field goal and we know how pivotal, you talk about finishing, you know how pivotal that turned down. Did not have him the rest of the game. Granted, Jamal was only 13 carries, 52 yards, but he was starting to play pretty well in that point. You remember on that drive nine yard run he got hurt on a two yard run for a first down that kind of kept him going he's more of an emotional linchpin than maybe a lot of guys or a lot of fans would give him credit for because he is so young but to lose him they got situations we knew about Taysom being in situations where he had to throw this is still not his strong point you're absolutely right with his development let Taysom run it every single play let him run it First time in my life ever actually being down here, but let's go youth, baby. Go youth. Gotta go where they're playing. Play defense. Play defense. Defense. Way more defense. How about that D? Throw it. Throw it. Run game. Play action. Play action. it's unfortunate because once again just like in 2012 the defense played a pretty good game they weren't perfect gave up some big sure. plays gave up that big long drive to Utah late but you only give up 20 points to a decent Utah squad and you lose and you know from a defensive standpoint they'd probably take 20 points thinking the offense would be able to get them at least 21 can't do it
We talked about the impact that Jamal Williams had on the football game, but we want to wish him and his family all the best. Uh, last I heard, he was at the hospital at the ICU, was what uh, Michael Elisa said in the, yeah, the post game interview. They didn't believe he was in the so, ICU. They okay. believed he was in the hospital. ESPN uh, reporting that Jamal's mother, who follows a lot of people on Twitter, reported that he had feeling in his arms, legs, and feet. So you can only hope the best for the young man beyond football because, hey, that's the most important thing is your health, obviously. Absolutely. So all the best to Jamal Williams and his family. Now we get ready. BYU's back here Friday night, Middle Tennessee State, bounce back game. They played angry against Texas, bouncing back from a disappointing loss. I wouldn't be surprised to see BYU really come out on fire and play a lot better against Middle Tennessee State. So we'll be back here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium next Friday night when BYU takes on Middle Tennessee State.